Angels are not just metaphors for good. Angels actually exist, and I want to give you nine biblical truths about angelic beings. Before I begin, if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell when you do. You can also follow us wherever you're watching us. Now, in regards to angels, these heavenly beings, the Bible only gives us glimpses at them. Concerning angels, not everything is 100% crystal clear. So I'm only going to stick to what the Bible clearly teaches and we'll leave speculation for another time. Now, I did tell you that I wanted to give you nine truths about these heavenly beings, but before I do that, I want to talk about the classification of these heavenly beings. First, we have the archangels. These are the chief angels. They are engaged in spiritual warfare. They are the stronger angels. We find a reference to the archangels in Jude chapter 1, verse 9. But even Michael, one of the mightiest of the angels, did not dare accuse the devil of blasphemy, but simply said, the Lord rebuke you. Now notice the language here used in Jude. But even Michael, in other words, even Michael, the strong angel, even Michael, the spiritual warfare angel, wouldn't come against the devil personally. He wouldn't bring an accusation against Satan himself. So the scripture puts them in a category of their own as a more powerful type of angel, one engaged in spiritual warfare. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says this, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, the scripture says, But for 21 days the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me, and I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. So there, the scripture clearly shows us that archangels are involved in spiritual warfare. Next, we have the seraphim. A reference to the seraphim can be found in Isaiah chapter 6. The seraphim are usually associated with worship or with purification. Some speculate that the seraphim actually sing. This is why we at Encounter TV say that we have our own in-house seraphim with Stephen Moctezuma, but that's sort of an inside joke that we have. Next, we see the cherubim. Genesis 3.24 says, After sending them out, the Lord God stationed mighty cherubim to the east of the Garden of Eden, and he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Now, in Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 5 and verses 13 through 15, and in Ezekiel chapter 10, verses 1 through 2, we see a more detailed description of the cherubim. Next, we have the fallen angels. Now, a few points to be made here about the fallen angels. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, we see that they rebelled against God. This was their first sin. And as a result, they were banished to the earth. Then, while on earth, they committed a second sin, found in Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. As a result of this second sin, their punishment was to be banished to the bottomless pit. Revelation 9.11 tells us of the king of the bottomless pit. 2 Peter 2.4 tells us that these angels in the bottomless pit are awaiting judgment. Now, it's possible that some of these fallen angels can still remain upon the earth. In fact, Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 tells us of the potential of an angel preaching another gospel. Only a fallen angel would preach deception. So, the archangels, the seraphim, the cherubim, and then the fallen angels. Now, concerning the truths about angelic beings. Number one, angels have physical bodies. Luke chapter 24, verse 4 says, As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. In verse 23 of Luke chapter 24, the Bible says, They said his body was missing, and they had seen angels who told them Jesus is alive. So notice that in verse 4, they're described as men, and in verse 23, it's clarified that they were actually angels. In other words, when they saw the angels, because the angels appeared in physical form, they mistook them for human beings. So angels do have physical bodies. Number two, angels can appear in dreams. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 says, As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, 
Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. What an amazing truth that these angelic beings, not only can they move from realm to realm, but they can also enter into your dreams. Number three, angels walk among us. This isn't superstition. This is biblical truth. Hebrews 13, 2 says, Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. For some who have done this have entertained angels without realizing it. Number four, angels are messengers. Luke chapter 1, verses 11 through 14 says this, While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. So often throughout the Old and New Testament, when God wanted to send a message to a certain individual, he would sometimes send an angel. Number five, and this one is a powerful truth, angels protect. Daniel 6.22 says, My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me. For I have been found innocent in his sight, and I have not wronged you, your majesty. Psalm 91, 11 to 13. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. This is for you. Listen now. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. Angelic beings protect God's people. You have heavenly protection. You have your own set of security guards that follow you around, and God watches over you, yes, but He also sends angelic beings. Who knows how many times angels have prevented disaster from coming your way. God sends His angels to protect. Number six, angels warn. Revelation 14, 6-7 says, And I saw another angel flying through the sky, carrying the eternal good news to proclaim to the people who belong to this world, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. Fear God, he shouted. Give glory to him, for the time has come when he will sit as judge. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all the springs of water. Angelic beings don't only bring messages for direction. They also bring warnings from God. Number seven, angels guide. Exodus 23, 20 says, See, I am sending an angel before you to protect you on your journey and lead you safely to the place I have prepared for you. Number eight, angels serve. Therefore, angels are only servants, spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. So angels are not to be worshiped in God's place. Yes, they are supernatural beings, but look at what the scripture says. I want to read this again because it's so powerful. Angels are only servants, spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. In other words, God has sent angels to serve you and I. What a powerful truth that not only do angels protect us, but God sends them to serve us. Number nine, angels pray. Zechariah 1.12 says, Upon hearing this, the angel of the Lord prayed this prayer. O Lord of heaven's armies, for 70 years now you have been angry with Jerusalem and the towns of Judah. How long until you again show mercy to them? Here we see an angel interceding, praying for. Think about that. That God allows angels to pray for you and I. We know the Holy Spirit prays for us. We know our loved ones pray for us. What an amazing truth that angels also pray for us. So we have an army praying for us. So number one, angels have physical bodies. Number two, angels can appear in dreams. Number three, angels walk among us. Number four, angels are messengers. Number five, angels protect. Number six, angels warn. Seven, angels guide. Eight, angels serve. Nine, angels pray. God has given us these gifts, these heavenly beings. Angels are not, I'll say it again, 
angels are not just metaphors for good. They are living, sentient beings from the heavenly realm that God sends to assist and protect and guide and pray for his children. So Father, help us to be thankful for and aware of the heavenly hosts who surround us. Thank you, Father, that you have given us divine support through not only your Holy Spirit, through not only fellow believers, but also through angels, your heavenly messengers. Thank you, Father, and help us to be more aware. Please help us to be more aware of the spiritual realm. Say that out loud. Say, Lord, help me to see. Say it again. Say, Lord, help me to see. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, amen. Well, that is it for the lesson. Here now is a question for conversation. Have you ever had an encounter with an angel? Tell me about it in the comments. Now, here are comments from a previous video titled, This is what Spirit-Filled People are like. On that video, Kathleen Guile wrote, Wonderful teaching. Walk in excellence so others will praise God because of how he is moving and working through you. Excellence is not to be the best among men, but to do your best to please God. Thank you, Pastor. Glory to God. Amanda Rivera writes, Amen. Only the Holy Spirit can lead us to be excellent because he is excellence himself. Thank you, Brother David. This message was just on time. God bless you. Emily Laramore writes, Amazing teaching about doing everything with excellence for the Lord by the Holy Spirit. This trait is often overlooked, so thank you for doing a teaching on it. God bless you. Catherine Meyer writes, this is good. Thank you, Pastor David, for this inspiring message. Hey, don't forget, if you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe and click that notification bell when you do. You can also follow us wherever else you're watching us. Now, I want to talk to you about partnering with this ministry. If you believe in what we're doing, if you believe in soul winning, if you believe in evangelism, if you believe in praying for the sick, if you believe in empowering and equipping Christians all over the world, then be a part of what God is doing through this ministry. Help support the media. Help support the live streams. Help support the events that we do all around the world. Help support the Holy Spirit School through a monthly partnership with our ministry. Consider today signing up to become a $30 a month partner. When you sign up to partner with us at $30 a month, we'll send you a beautiful Dove lapel pin so that you can show your support of the ministry. You get access to our monthly partner Zoom calls. I'll even send you a book of your choice, sign it, and send it to you as a thank you. For updated information on how to partner with us and also updated information on partner benefits, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Sign up for $30 a month today. You can also sign up for any monthly amount. You can also give a one-time gift by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Well, whatever you do, whether monthly or one-time, in whatever amount, please go and do it today. Again, Partnership, davidhernandezministries.com slash partner, one-time donations, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Help us take the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit all around the world through events and media. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.